what are some of the best flood evidences? If the flood really did occur, what evidence would we look for? You know, most people haven't even thought of that question, let alone thought of an answer. You know, the Bible says that the fountains of the great deep were open, the rain fell from heaven for 40 days and 40 nights, the waters rose 150 days until all the high hills under the whole of the heaven were covered and the mountains were covered. And we're told that all land dwelling, air breathing life perished except for those on the ark. Wouldn't we expect to find billions of dead plants and animals buried in rock layers laid down by water all over the earth? And that's exactly what we find. Billions of dead things called fossils buried in rock layers laid down by water all over the earth. But let's expand on that. Let's look at six of the best evidences for the flood. Evidence number one, sea creatures buried high in mountains on the continents. That's right, marine creatures that live in the ocean are found in mountains like the Himalayas. How did they get there? Unless the ocean waters rose up over the continents. And we find marine creatures in rock layers all over the continents everywhere around the world. Evidence number two, we'd find rapidly buried plants and animals. Well, we do, fossils. We find fossils not only of plants, but of bees, of bats. We find fish that are, uh, haven't finished having their breakfast eating another fish they're buried and fossilised. Ichthyosaurs giving birth to babies and they're fossilised. We find delicately preserved fossilised jellyfish. How do you fossilise a jellyfish slowly? Evidence number three, rapidly deposited sediment layers right across the continents. We find that everywhere we look. Look at the red wall limestone, full of fossils in the Grand Canyon. Yet the same limestone layer is found in the same position over in Pennsylvania, then over in England, and even in the Himalayas. The chalk beds, the White Cliffs of Dover, we find the same chalk beds in Europe, in the Middle East, over into Kazakhstan, we find the same chalk beds with the same fossils in Texas and the Midwestern United States. We find the same chalk beds in Western Australia. The coal beds of Pennsylvania and West Virginia are also found in, in England and Europe, right across to the Ural Mountains. Evidence number four, long transport distance of sediments. The Coconino sandstone in the Grand Canyon. The sand grains are believed to have been eroded and washed from it far north as at least Wyoming. The Navajo sandstone in Zion National Park, those huge white cliffs, the sand grains are believed to have been eroded and washed all the way from the Appalachians right across North America. Evidence number five, rapid or no erosion between uh, sediment layers. Again, you think in terms of the uh, Coconino sandstone and the Hermit Shale, it's a, there's a knife edge, flat featureless boundary between those two rock layers for mile after mile through the Grand Canyon. Yet the geologists claim that there's 10 million years missing at that boundary. What would have happened during 10 million years of weathering and erosion? You'd get a topography, not a flat featureless boundary. The bottom of the Grand Canyon, the Tapit sandstone sits on the pre-flood rocks and we have evidence of huge erosion there with boulders being picked up from the underlying rock layers indicating rapid erosion. Evidence number six, we find whole rock layer sequences deposited rapidly in quick succession. Look at the walls of the Grand Canyon from the Tapits at the bottom to the Kaibab limestone at the top, supposed to be representing 300 million years of slow and gradual sedimentary deposition. When the plateau was pushed up, those rock layers were bent and folded, but they were folded without fracturing. They had to be soft if they were bent without fracturing. That means that they could only have just have been deposited, but that means the 300 million years never happened. All those rock layers had to be rapidly deposited in quick succession during the flood year. So you see, when you ask the right question, you get the right answers. Who are we going to believe? The scientists who weren't there, who don't know everything, who sometimes make mistakes, or the word of God who was there, who saw what happened and told us what happened during the flood. And what we see in God's world agrees with what we read in God's word.